Two days ago, Meta AI dropped this really interesting paper, LM Infinite, and it hasn't gotten much traction. And I'm not really sure why, so I read it and uh, decided to make a quick video about it in order to unpack and tell you about this paper and why I think it's pretty cool. So here's the paper. Uh, it's preprint, so keep that in mind. It has not been fully reviewed and accepted yet, but two days ago, August 30th, uh, this paper dropped and its name and origin were interesting. It's called LM Infinite, Simple on the Fly Length Generalization for Large Language Models, and it was uh, produced primarily by Meta AI. So Meta, formerly Facebook, uh, under Mark Zuckerberg, you know, Meta has done a lot of really interesting stuff with, uh, you know, Llama, and um, they're also kind of more big into open source, which is a really interesting move. Uh, so the long story short is this paper proposes two primary innovations. The first is a lambda-shaped attention mask, which uh, constrains the number of tokens that it needs to attend to. And this addresses the issue of high dilution uh, over time, particularly with large context windows. And if that doesn't make any sense, don't worry. We're going to unpack it in just a second. And then the second is that it bounds the relative distance during attention to a fixed value, uh, which is basically just capping the value. Uh, I looked at the math, and it just like it, it basically just pads the or, or creates a, a smaller window. Uh, in order to constrain the math so that the so that the 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 uh, attention logits don't get too big all the all the math and formulas are in the paper if you're curious but the, the basically what this does is this presents a plug and play solution uh, to open source language models where all you have to do is tweak some of the math functions about how it pays attention and then you end up with uh, one, uh, much better performance over long context windows, particularly long context windows that are much longer than what it was even trained on. Uh, and some of the tests that they did were uh, passkey retrieval on long context. And so passkey retrieval is a really good test of attention because it, there's a very, very specific, unique string of characters that it needs to fetch. And with dilution, uh, it might kind of forget those. So dilution is the phenomenon that you've probably noticed in language models where once the conversation gets longer, it kind of seems to forget what was at the beginning of the conversation, even if it's in the context window. So that's the problem that this solves. So a way to analogize this, a way to think of it is that without this innovation, without the Lambda mask and without the, the bounded um, attention uh, size, Imagine that your entire memory is a gigantic cluttered warehouse, that this is your working memory and that you've got to keep track of literally every word in this gigantic warehouse. Uh, and it's just, you know, however many tokens you give it, that's how many it's going to keep track of. The mathematical complexity goes up uh, logarithmically, I think, or factorially. I don't remember exactly. Anyways, point being is that the more you have to keep track of, the more mathematical complexity there is and the more memory it takes. Uh, so this is similar to human memory. So I'm analogizing language model, the internal representation of language models to human working memory. Now, on a physical level, they're not identical at all. This is just an analogy um, so that you can kind of uh, get an intuition as to what this innovation is doing. So if you have, if you're trying to hold too many things in your mind to work on at once, this is cluttered and overloaded working memory, which impairs your reasoning and functioning and it slows you down. On the, con on the other hand, constrained, cleaner working memory gives you better performance. And so in this respect, it's almost kind of like a, a, a garbage collection uh, mechanism for language models. And if you're not familiar with gar garbage collection, we'll go over it in just a little bit. So instead of having a gigantic uh, cluttered warehouse to sift through all the tokens in a large context window, this innovation mathematically constrains that working space to more like a tidy, well-organized closet. There's less to keep track of. It's mathematically simpler. And in, in, <laughs> to, to continue the analogy, which one would you rather be responsible for organizing? Would you rather be responsible for organizing a nice tidy closet with clean labeled shelves or a gigantic warehouse with stacks of boxes? It's pretty obvious which one is going to be easier to operate in. And this, it, this, this analogy is why uh, LLMs that have this constrained working memory tend to perform better. 
And it prevents that dilution and degeneration because it says, you know what, instead of trying to keep track of all the tokens, just keep track of the most important ones and let go of the rest. Uh, and one thing that I that I observed is uh, if you just have one room, it's pretty it's pretty impossible to get lost. And so that's kind of that that lost sensation is what you notice when uh, you know, particularly on longer chats like uh, Claude with its hundred thousand token window, it gets so lost in the space of what you're talking about because it has it doesn't have the mental ability to kind of zoom in and remember which specific bits are relevant. And so in uh, to to further the comparison to human memory, imagine you're reading a novel. You imagine you're reading a series of novels. You're reading Lord of the Rings, which is a million, I think it's 1.2 million words or something like that. Um, so you're reading Lord of the Rings and there's something that happens, you know, later in the, in the you know, near the, uh, the end of the books and it refers back to something that happened in the first book. So that was a million a million tokens ago, but you can remember very precisely what that one thing was because your working memory is constrained and once that once that bit of information that happened a long time ago is brought back into memory, you kind of get rid of the rest. So it's about it's about maintaining a level of salience and relevance. Now that's again, this is not a perfect metaphor, but um, given my knowledge of psychology and neuroscience, uh, this helped me build an intuition for what this paper is presenting. So another thing to keep in mind is these are easy tweaks. In this paper, they tested it on three different open source models, and they had the same generalized results, generalized improvement, uh, just by changing the math uh, within these, these three models. So it's just little tweaks. It, it wasn't a brand new uh, attention mechanism. They didn't have to even retrain the models. It is a drop-in solution to automatically improve uh, any open source model. It could work on closed source models, but obviously, like, you know, they don't have access to GPT-3 or GPT-4 to, you know, uh, pull it open and try it. They don't have access to Claude. But because of how easy this mathematical improvement is, I suspect that future updates for all the flagship models out there, you know, chat GPT and Claude, I suspect that they will in integrate these kinds of improvements uh, relatively soon. And so the takeaway is that on the really long conversations that you have with these chatbots, where there's a huge amount of context, it's going to have a lot more precise memory, which is going to give it, uh, get it kind of across that uncanny valley that it's currently stuck in, where like, hey, you know, as a human, I can read this whole conversation and remember the salient bits, but you seem to get lost or you seem to forget the detail that I told you last time. Uh, so... Another thing to make it more relevant to computer science, I also analogize this to garbage collection. So garbage collection, if you're not familiar with this, is a process that uh, many compiled languages use uh, or interpreted languages. Python has automatic garbage collection in the interpreter. Uh, but garbage collection looks for unused memory that the that the that the program has allocated. So as you're running a program, it's uh, you know calling up variables and lists and arrays and other constructs, uh, and then sometimes those get orphaned. You stop using them, and but if you don't, uh, if you're not careful about it, those will accumulate in memory, and so this is what's called a memory leak. And so garbage collection keeps the runtime running lean and efficient by just by banishing, by fully deleting from memory anything that's not being used anymore. So while again the the way that this mechanism works is not anything remotely like garbage collection, functionally. Uh, it is it is analogous to garbage collection. So I want to drive that home. Like calling this garbage collection is a total misnomer, and I'm aware of that. But because garbage collection is something that exists in computer science already, I figured it would be a useful kind of saying, hey, it's kind of like this thing, but in this other domain. Um, so here's a way to compare it. The Lambda mask privilege is retaining the newer local context. It actually has two legs. Um, so there's there's two, two uh, primary mechanisms that the Lambda mask uses to make decisions, but I'm not going to get into the details because uh, that'll just bore you. Um, anyway, so the Lambda mask privilege is retaining the newer local context while masking away older tokens. So masking older tokens is similar to garbage collection in that you remove it from memory. So you see, you see where I get the idea from. Uh, and the other thing is garbage collectors, as I mentioned, prioritize collecting older unreferenced data first. So basically, you clean up the space by just getting rid of the stuff that you don't want. It's like Marie Kondo. <laughs> this token does not spark joy. Get rid of it. <laughs> I'm really ashamed that I just used that metaphor. <laughs> uh, anyways, 
The point is, both of them aim to create free space and reduce uh, clutter in memory without losing the critical information. Okay, so what? Uh, as I said, one thing that I expect is that because this is such an easy drop-in solution, you're going to see uh, just this kind of transparent improvement um, in pretty much all language models, probably relatively soon, because again, like it's a really quick tweak. Uh, and now that's that's short term, but long term, what do these kinds of algorithms, uh, algorithmic improvements mean for language model and language technology? Well, like I said earlier, one of the primary constraints that we see is just that you know, that that forgetfulness that language models have, where they don't really remember what is the most important bit of a conversation or a large context to pay attention to. And so while this doesn't get it quite to the level of precision of human recall, where like, you know, hey, you know, like, Bob, remember that thing that we were talking about three years ago, and you can instantly recall that into memory and, and hold that, that, you know, episodic memory in isolation. It doesn't quite solve it that way. We probably still need like search and recall and, and fetch and databases and vector search for some of those kinds of functions. But... As you're reading a long document, whether it's, you know, a 200-page uh, criminal filing, a class action lawsuit, or a novel, um, it's more like the ability to recall, like, oh, you know, three chapters ago, this character said this to that other character. That's the kind of level of precision that we're looking at. Um, and that's very similar to that passkey retrieval from a 32,000 context window. So imagine that you read a password at the beginning of a 20,000 page document, and then by the end of the document, you can read, you can remember that passkey. That's what this allows. So that is that is a uh, you could you could say that that could be superhuman level of recall. Um, although there are plenty of people that do ha that would have the ability to say that password is important. I'm going to keep that in memory even as I remember or as I keep reading the rest of this document. So some other examples as to where I see this being really helpful. Reading and writing fiction, like I said, keeping track of the the most salient tokens within uh, you know a field of um, right now the, the the most that they tested was 32,000. Uh, but these were this was a test on 32,000 token context windows with language models that were trained on 2,000. So there you have a factor of 8x. No, almost 20x, sorry. Uh, you have a factor of almost 20x improvement. So in the future, six months from now, 12 months from now, when we have uh, more and more models that have 100,000, 500,000, 1 million context uh, token windows uh, being very commonplace, I suspect that that means that like, you, no matter how long the conversation is, you say, hey, remember when we talked about this thing, you know, uh, X, you know, many months ago, and it'll be able to recall exactly that right memory. Um, scientific research. So a lot of people are plugging uh, a lot of scientific papers into things like Claude and other tools. So imagine that you have a context window that can ingest a hundred scientific research papers and is able to pick out and remember the most salient details from each of those papers to easily keep them all in memory and kind of triangulate, say, okay, this is the pattern that I see and I'm able to recall exactly which line in each of those is relevant. Uh, to put this into context for enterprise and business, and uh, another thing that this could be really helpful is imagine you've got you know customer records or internal knowledge base articles, and rather than have to read each one and even like split them up and chunk them, you just say, "Here's the entire knowledge base. Read it. Tell me what's relevant to this problem right here." <laughs> so this is going to greatly, greatly accelerate and simplify search and recall, and it's going to really increase uh, retrieval accuracy, particularly on large documents. So. While this one innovation might not carry us fully to, to this realization, this is just one innovation. And remember, we're getting like something like 50 LLM papers per day, at least just on archive, um, sometimes more. Uh, so this is just another drop in the bucket. But it's uh, to me, it's a really encouraging sign that we have not fully explored this space. So this is taking a big step back. When you can just pick this low-hanging fruit and you get this level of improvement, you get a 10x improvement on uh, context window retrieval just from changing the math a little bit, we are still establishing the first principles of language technology. So we don't know where the ceiling is. Like, <laughs> we, just, we just hit escape velocity on language models, and we have no idea how high this can go. So I'm actually getting chills thinking about how exciting this is and what this implies for the future of language technology, 
because that level of memory sophistication, I didn't, I personally, six months ago, if you, if you had told me that you could, you could sift through and keep track of 32,000 tokens with this level of precision, with only a slight mathematical tweak, I would have been like, well, that completely blows everything that I think about the way that these models are going out of the water. And the reason that I say that is because I noticed that dilution pattern uh, that that happens, and I thought that ah, that's just not going to be a solvable problem. We need external memory systems to handle uh, complex memory tasks and language models. But now I am thinking that is go less and less going to be true. Uh, so with all that being said, thanks for watching. I hope you got a lot out of this, and I hope you're as excited as I am, and you see that we are just at the ground floor, and we have no idea how high this uh, elevator is going to go. So thanks for watching. Take care, and uh, yeah, see you next time.